and there's going to be a lot of fighting because there's a lot of money at stake right and if if you have that much money at stake you know no one's going to go easily and there's going to be lots of lobbying as i get older i'm more of the opinion that many of these 501c3s many of these non-profit charity organizations they start out um they start out with a good idea and then they run out of money and so then they go look around for someone to give them money and so i think like 40 or 50 years ago someone gave money uh to a greenpeace type organization to lobby against nuclear power and probably it was the oil and gas industry that gave a lot of money to these charities to lobby against nuclear power to shut down the nuclear power industry and then ironically uh, another 30 or 40 years the solar and the uh, wind lobby gives money to them to lobby against the oil and gas industry and then when they run out of that you know uh, other crypto promoters are giving money to all, to to these environmental lobbyists they're just giving them huge amounts of money to lobby against uh, bitcoin If you're an environmentalist you would be focused upon saving the trees or saving the seals or 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 doing something in order to cultivate parks and the like but 99.92% of all the carbon comes from something other than energy that fuels proof of work so i actually think um it's it's the other crypto promoters that are fine that are generating all of the attack points they're generating all the propaganda they're feeding it they're funneling it through academics they're funneling it through politicians they're funneling it through 501c3s and and through environmental activists and so you have to just follow the money they're funneling it through their lobbyists and i think their agenda is they're all promoting unregistered securities so all of all of these uh, other cryptos are for the most part unregistered securities and uh, so you have to have a justification for promoting a crypto token that doesn't use energy if you understood securities law and if you thought about physics you would realize that when you slurp the energy out of the commodity it becomes a security I think that uh, there are some crypto organizations uh, that are lobbying both sides of the fence. You have an entire crypto industry and a lot of crypto promoters that they've got this kind of existential problem and there's no way to defend it. I mean there really is no defense to uh to creating a token, giving it to yourself, selling it to the general public and not disclosing. And so the best way to deal with it is change the subject. So we change the subject to energy usage is bad and the reason that you should let us exist and the reason you buy our token is cuz bitcoin is bad for the environment right well it it's bad for the environment in the same way that oranges and meat and buildings and cars are bad for the environment they all use energy in fact hospitals use energy right so If I went to you and I said I'm going to eliminate your hospital and I'm going to replace it with a virtual imaginary hospital that's going to actually lower the cost of healthcare and I'm going to fix your avatar up whenever your avatar has a has a imaginary heart attack I'll give you imaginary surgery and I'll make you imaginary healthy and you could pay me in imaginary coins and then you'll go home imaginary happy sure you could do it but it's ridiculous The market is going to become more and more educated and as the market gets more educated uh it's going to see the virtues of Bitcoin as the dominant digital commodity and Bitcoin's going to get stronger. I think that uh that regulators as they focus on this the more when you focus on it and you bring a lot of attention to bear I think they're going to realize that uh they need to segment the market into digital currencies, uh digital securities, digital commodities. If you think about it, first people need to understand why Bitcoin is a superior crypto asset to every other crypto asset for a long-term store of value or for sovereignty. That was the first thing MicroStrategy went through. The second thing they need to understand is why is Bitcoin superior to gold as a bearer instrument or or a commodity or precious metal store of asset of value that's going to be the second uh stage and the third stage is why is bitcoin as crypto property superior to other forms of property the crypto world has about a trillion dollars worth of money floating around and we're trying to sort out which is the superior crypto asset right 
and for what? And, and the truth is, I really believe the killer application is is a lightning wallet on eight billion smartphones that has U.S. dollars as a short-term medium exchange and payment network, and BTC as a store of value. And it runs on Lightning, and then it is secured by the underlying Bitcoin、uh, base chain, base layer. That's that is、uh, going to be the voice over IP moment or the web, the the,、uh, the Netscape moment, when you actually have the ability to download a Lightning wallet in 30 seconds and trade U.S. dollars with all eight billion people on the planet friction free. When that happens, that'll go viral, and hundreds and hundreds of millions of people will first grab that in the first year, and then billions of people will grab that. Technology is going to play a role here in spreading things. If you look at that, but from the investor point of view, there's a trillion dollars that's being argued over in the crypto world. There's ten trillion dollars in the precious metals world of gold. There's more than a hundred trillion dollars of property. And then, of course, ultimately, there's 500 trillion dollars of other assets, and so what we're going to go through is just a very intense education process, and there's going to be a lot of fighting because there's a lot of money at stake, right? And if if you have that much money at stake, you know, no one's going to go easily, and there's going to be lots of lobbying and lots of positioning. You know, ultimately,、uh, the market will be will decide and. And the the thing that will cause Bitcoin to win is that everyone that understands proof of work is going to realize that Bitcoin is the best proof of work network, and that's why it's 95 percent. And then people that buy into proof of stake, they're going to be in a war to keep upgrading their proof of stake cryptos, and they'll keep hard forking and hard forking and hard forking. And ultimately,、uh, the competition between all of the various proof-of-stake networks over who's got the most functionality and who's got the most performance will devolve into a technology competition of software companies, and they will be recognized as software companies. And eventually, they'll have to register as software companies, and they will centralize. And the typical investor, the ones to invest in a software company. Will sift between the various ones, but someone that wants to store their value for a hundred years is not going to trust the software company, and a government is not going to—they're not going to actually invest their sovereign treasury in a software company stock. There's no way that a government, the United States, is not going to trust a Chinese software company. China is not going to trust an American software company. And when a billion people are running a decentralized node, no one's going to be able to change it. It is truly a digital commodity, which makes it a basis of sovereignty and freedom. So I, I have, I'm confident and optimistic that this is, it's a pretty important thing. I have confidence that other objective people, you know, neutral observers, they will come to the same conclusion. The disinterested parties will come to the same conclusion. And as they come to that conclusion, the market will segment, and things will sort themselves out in, in a rational fashion for the good of humanity.